Ja, herzlich willkommen zur dritten Online-Weinprobe vom Zanzarelli. Diesmal mit Calmel et Joseph aus Frankreich. Äh, ich hoffe, wir sind pünktlich. Auf jeden Fall ähm, fängt es äh, an. Ich freue mich auf alle, die da sind. Ich hoffe, ihr könnt mich gut hören. Und ich erzähle schon mal so zwei, drei Worte über das Weingut. Das ist in Südfrankreich, in der Nähe von Carcassonne. Carcassonne ist eine wunderschöne mittelalterliche Stadt, ähm, die äh, komplett erhalten ist und im Sommer äh, von amerikanischen und äh, chinesischen äh, ähm, Touristen überflutet wird. Dieses Jahr vielleicht nicht, aber ähm, wenn man da quasi im März oder im Herbst hinkommt, ist es da wunder, wunderschön. Ähm, und wir werden zum Ende der Probe noch ein paar Bilder zeigen von 2014, als ich dort war, auf einer Weinreise zusammen mit Ariane, die ihr ja auch alle kennt, ähm, und dann äh, gehen wir jetzt gleich rein. Äh, Heidi und äh, äh, Jerome warten schon auf uns, äh, beziehungsweise im Moment Heidi. <lacht> Ein, einen wunderschönen guten Abend. Ähm, ich halte die Probe hauptsächlich auf Deutsch und übersetze, was gesagt wird. Heidi spricht auch ein bisschen Deutsch. Ähm, aber, äh, hallo. aber Jerome wird halt auf Englisch was sagen oder auf Französisch und dann wird Heidi übersetzen. Äh, und dann würde ich sagen, ähm, ja, guten Abend und herzlich willkommen. Hallo, hallo. Jerome kommt, Jerome Jerome kommt. kommt. Nur, meine, eine Minute. nur meine Minute, <lacht> bitte. Ja, dann kannst du, uh, perhaps you can tell us a few words about the winery before he comes, so to introduce him. With a, with a case, with a, with a case that, that you can see all the bottles. You can see all the ah. bottles. <lacht> Here is Jerome. Here is Hello. Jerome. Hello. 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 Seeing everybody. Seeing everybody. Bonsoir. 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 So, maybe you can do a little introduction of your winery at the starting, so, like how you came to to make wine and and how how your philo philosophy uh, came into into the. In, in to the world. Like, um, ich frage ihn erstmal, wie sein, sein Weingut sozusagen entstanden ist und uh, wie das Ganze uh, um, angefangen hat. Uh, uh, completely, uh, at the, completely at the opposite of the side of Mediterranean the Mediterranean Sea. So uh, it's a so, uh, special it's situation, a special for, situation the, for the for the for a domain situated in this appellation because uh, it's near Carcassonne and uh, it's at 250 300 meters, so it's quite high in altitude, and uh, we have different varietals and different culture inside of this domain which is work completely in organic way. So uh, we are 100% organic on the, on the 200 hectares of the domain. So we have uh, 20 hectares of vineyard, we have olive trees, we have uh, cereals, we have uh, lavender. lavender, we have uh, fruit uh, trees, we have different things like this. And we are working like this on the, on the biodiversity mm -hmm. And um, the altitude of the um, the altitude of um, of the um, of the domain uh, allow us to produce wines uh, with a beautiful balance between uh, freshness and uh, and ripeness in the in the in the wine. So uh, the, it's exactly what we are looking for for all the all the wines that we are producing in uh, in languedoc okay then, then give me a minute to translate so so our uh, uh, customers who don't speak english so well can get a little bit uh, of the impression what you just said um, die Domäne yes. ist äh, auf einer relativ hohen äh, Höhe, von, von, von Meer, Meereshöhe aus gesehen, im Languedoc, in der Nähe von Co äh, Carcassonne. Ähm, ähm, das ist im Corbière, um genau zu sein, die Appellation. Ähm, 
Und äh, die Höhe ist zwischen 250 Meter und 400 Meter. Äh, das ist das Besondere, weil äh, die Höhe macht mit dem Wein natürlich auch was Besonderes. Ähm, und es gibt auf äh, den 200 Hektar, die zum, zur Domäne gehören, sind 20 Hektar ungefähr Wein. Aber es gibt auch Olivenbäume, es gibt äh, Cereals, das ist so äh, quasi äh, verschiedene, äh, was man so braucht für, fürs Müsli machen, also ja. im Anbau. Ähm, <lacht> und äh, man, äh, dann gibt es noch... Äh, habe ich was vergessen? Oliven, ja, Oliven hatte ich gesagt, Olivenbäume, sprich äh, Öl und äh, Oliven. Ähm, und ähm, also eine ganze Menge Fläche mehr als der Wein halt insgesamt. I think I gave an overview. <lacht> Maybe I forgot something. <lacht> so. So um, this domain, um, this domain, uh, we, we have um, we have started in this domain um, in 2015. So it's not uh, uh, not a very long time, but uh, we have decided to be uh, to be in this domain uh, um, because it's at the image of what we are doing from uh, now uh, near than 25 years inside of the Languedoc Roussillon uh, with all the wines that we propose. And um, these wines, uh, they are made in the same process than the private wine cellar. Uh, it means that um, we are inside of the languedoc Cousillon and we make parcel selection and our own vinification, own blends and own aging. So all the wines that we are producing in all the region of languedoc Cousillon are similar in terms of process than the, than the private, uh, private wine cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, alles, was produziert wird auf der Domäne, wird uh, quasi wie in einem privaten Weinkeller, also in kleineren Kellereien, uh, alles in der Domain verarbeitet und uh, produziert. Um, das ist halt... Uh, um, in Frankreich so, wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe, also was mir früher mal erklärt wurde, äh, es darf äh, nur Domain heißen, wenn alle Sachen quasi in einem, in einer, in einem Ort passieren. Is that right? It, you only, uh, in, in, Fra in France, it's, uh, uh, you can only be a domain if it's all done in one place or in, in, in the region. Or is, how is it with the name uh, domain? A domain or a yeah. chateau, uh, owner of the vineyard, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, yes, you are right. It's produced in the, in one place in one appellation. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. So, for example, the domain Calmel and Joseph is situated in the Corbière appellation, mm -hmm. and we're producing Corbière wines and then the Pays wines as well, but. Uh, Uh, mainly Corbière wines, like uh, La Madone, Le Sentier, Le Penchant. Uh, all these wines, they are coming directly from, uh, from the domain ah. uh, in Montirat, in the, the little village near Carcassonne, mm -hmm. uh, called uh, Montirat village. Ah. But, but our activity, our main activity, is an activity of... Uh, uh, what we call negos, but a special negos, a small micro negos. And uh, this, uh, this work, we are doing it from now uh, more than 20 years. And, uh, and, uh, but following a process which is similar to, the, to what it is done in a, a private yeah. wine cellar. We are not buying bulk wines. We are not buying bulk wines. We are selecting parcel and yes. we are doing uh, all the work as a private wine cellar inside of the of the vineyard we are doing our own vinification our own yes. aging so that's uh, um I have to switch to German. Sorry, I have to do the translation, not the English. Um, so, jetzt wieder zurück zum Deutschen. Also es ist so, um, ein Teil ist ihre eigene Domäne. Das sind diese uh, besonderen Weine, die sie in der Domain unter dem Domainnamen machen. Uh, aber es ist so, dass sie, um, als sie angefangen haben, uh, gar keine Domain besessen haben. Und deswegen um, um, mussten sie sehen, wie, wie macht man denn Weine, wenn man selber keinen Wein wenn man selber keinen Weinberg geerbt hat. Also muss man mit den Leuten, die diese Weinberge ähm, besitzen, verhandeln und quasi denen, äh, dass, dass quasi äh, 
die Weinbauern die Zuarbeit genauso machen, wie man das haben möchte. Sprich äh, ähm, anbauen, Schnitt, äh, Ernte, Selektion. Und das wird alles dann quasi von äh, äh, Jérôme und Laurent gemacht. Ähm, und auch äh, wie ein normales Weingut verarbeitet, aber das darf in, heißt in Frankreich dann halt anders. Uh, what was the name you, you used for, for the, the kind of winemaking you're doing? It's ne negotiation? No. Ne ne yes, it's a trading, it's a trading yeah. company. Uh, we are able to, uh, we are able to, to, to mm -hmm. produce wines in, uh, uh, in all the region of Languedoc-Roussillon. Yes. That's how I. Uh, that's how so I got to know you. When I started buying your wines, that's how I. Because it was a long years before you started the domain. Uh, I think I came to you in 2008 or nine. And right. um, back then you didn't have the domain, but you did all the the work that you've been doing for years. <laughs> so, and and where you produce the nice wines that I know. Um, and that's a special kind of work because uh, you have to do it that way uh, um, when you're not like um, uh, owning a winery in the normal way of winery, right? That's, so, that's right. But, but now you have the domain and now you're doing uh, uh, the domain work as well. The both yes. activities, yes. Uh, which is nice to see it growing like that. Which is interesting because, uh, yes, we are more obviously involved in the mm -hmm. vineyard than uh, we can be uh, in the part of the negoce because in the negoce, obviously, we are giving instruction to the, to the owners in order not to use uh, pesticides and herbicides and to work on, the, on a proper way. But at the same time, we are not... Uh, Uh, completely involved uh, every day in the work of the vineyard and uh, so we, we determine the date of the harvest at the end and uh, we control mm -hmm. that the grapes are uh, on the on the on the right quality that we have uh, expected or requested to the to the owner and after we start our work of vinification mm -hmm. aging obviously and clean and uh, And the distribution of our wines. But it's true that uh, in 2015 we have uh, started a new adventure in, uh, in this domain and, um, and we have not taking, taken, the, we have not taken the, easy, the easiest way because uh, we have decided to, to work uh, on the organic way, uh, on the biodynamic, uh, to work as well on the biodiversity, mm -hmm. uh, To work on different culture in order to have uh, something, uh, an environment and a place uh, with a lot of uh, richness and uh, and uh, and diversity, mm -hmm. which is great because I think because um, um, I've been uh, part of this work for like over 10 years now. It's like uh, very nice to see it growing like that. <laughs> for sure, thank you. So should should we start with the first wine? So, what yes. I, uh, was ich gerade gesagt habe, ist, uh, um, dass es sehr schön ist, über die letzten zehn Jahre einfach uh, begleitend als, als Weinhändlerin dabei zu sein, zu sehen, wie die Weine gewachsen sind und uh, wie es immer uh, ein bisschen schöner und toller wurde auf dem Weingut, weil uh, um, seit fünf Jahren jetzt halt die Domain dabei ist. Um, we start with the Chardonnay? No, we will start with the Pinot. Okay, the Pinot. if you say so. <laughs> um, eine Sache noch in die Runde. Wir kommen nach jedem Wein in den Chat zurück. Schreibt da eure Fragen rein. Und wenn ihr beim Nachhören dieser Weinprobe eine Untertitelübersetzung haben wollt, habe ich in den Kanal noch mal reingestellt, wie sowas funktioniert, dass ihr die Möglichkeit habt, euch den Text auch noch mal in Google übersetzten Deutsch mal vorzulesen. Ähm, kommen wir zum ersten Wein. Genau. Ähm, beim ersten Wein gibt es jetzt gleich eine kleine Änderung. Äh, Jerome möchte gerne, dass wir als erstes den Peak Pool machen. Also fangen wir mit dem zweiten Wein an. Ähm, deswegen ähm, wechsle ich jetzt mal schnell mein Glas. Dann nehmen wir den Peak Pool zuerst. Peak Pool de Piné. Also an alle, Peak Pool de Piné, nicht Chardonnay. Wir fangen mit zwei an und gehen dann zu eins. We're starting with the wine number two, uh, but we call it number one now. 
Pigpool de Pinay. So, so in fact, Pigpool de Pinay, it's a uh, it's a wine which is uh, without uh, uh, there is no aging in oak barrel, so yeah. you have no no feeling of uh, oak barrel. So I think it's uh, it's just on the fruit, it's yes. plain fruit, single varietal, and I think it's it's uh, maybe better to 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 start by uh, by this one. No, it's fine, it's fine, because uh, I I really uh, didn't think on the wood in that case. <laughs> No problem. So, wir fangen mit dem Picpoul an, weil der kein Holz hat. Der Chardonnay hat ein bisschen Holz und deswegen ist die Reihenfolge schöner, wenn wir mit dem Picpoul anfangen. Picpoul de Pinay ist eine Rebsorte, eine äh, äh, Single Varieté, also, also, also ein, ein reinsortige, eine autochtone Rebsorte, die, äh, soweit ich weiß, nur in einer Gemeinde in äh, Frankreich angebaut wird. Um, if I remember right, uh, Picpoul de Pinay is one uh, variety that, that's just uh, um, in one location in France, right? In one in one single, uh, what's it called? You are right, yes. Uh, Picpoul de Pinay is uh, an appellation. It's called Picpoul de Pinay and it's made with a grape which is called Picpoul White, Picpoul Blanc mm -hmm. in French. Uh, it's a varietal uh, situated uh, not very far from Seta, mm -hmm. uh, near uh, the Letan de Tour. I don't know if you are able to, to put a map. You can put a map. Yes, no, we, uh, yes, we can possible. do that. Um, okay. Um, it will be there in a second. <laughs> perfect. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So um, you have a Mediterranean Sea, as you can see. And uh, Picpoul de Pinay is situated, uh, uh, is, the yellow, uh, is the yellow place. Um, can, uh, can, uh, it's not can, possible to zoom on it. It's uh, not a problem. Can you go with the mouse? Uh, the mouse is not Okay. Um, also, it is the yellow Gemeinde, die man oben im oberen Drittel sieht. You mean the yellow uh, thing in the, on the upper. On the a little bit up, yes, yeah, it's a little up, uh, just missing missing missing. yes, now, yeah, then the yellow part that's in the middle. Well, <laughs> we have trouble It's like getting it in place, <laughs> so. <laughs> Ähm, also für alle, wenn ihr es jetzt gesehen habt, da ist so im oberen Drittel so ein gelbes Feld da ungefähr. This that one, richtig. that's perfect. Now, don't move, don't move, it's okay. So you can see uh, Languedoc, Picpoul de Pinay, the yellow uh, mm -hmm. area. area that you have on the on the right uh, side of the screen, and uh, so it's a, it's a now um, uh, an area with uh, one single varietal, which is called Picpoul White, uh, Picpoul mm. Blanc, and uh, this varietal is uh, a very original one. Uh, uh, You can't uh, you can find this uh, this uh, varietal uh, somewhere else uh, uh, in uh, in France and in the world, and now they have uh, obtained um, uh, uh, the, the the appellation by the Inao, and they produce uh, an AOP uh, AOP wine with um, with Picpoul mm -hmm. de Pinay, which is called Picpoul de Pinay. So it's perfect um, uh, with the all, all the seafood uh, oysters. Uh, Uh, shrimps, uh, mussels, all these mm -hmm. kind of things are, are, are perfect with this, uh, with this, this type of, uh, mm -hmm. of wine. And you want to translate? No, yeah, for, also, so? um, uh, es ist tatsächlich so, dass Picpoul um, weiß, also blanc, um, nur in diesem, um, also es ist nicht der, der mittlere gelbe Fleck, sondern der, der näher zum Meer ist, der so ein bisschen uh, honiggelber ist. Ähm, auch re relative Nä Meernähe und es ist ein ähm, Wein, der ähm, sehr gut zu Meeresfrüchten äh, und Fisch und äh, äh, solcherlei Gerichten passt. Also, und es gibt ihn wirklich nur in dieser Gemeinde, in keiner anderen sonst auf der Welt. Es ist so ein, so ein ganz besonderer Wein, der nur in der Gegend angebaut wird. Weil wenn wir gleich zum Chardonnay kommen, der wird ja überall auf der Welt angebaut, aber Picpoul de Pinay gibt es wirklich nur an diesem einen Platz. Das ist richtig. 
And um, it's an interesting varietal because uh, uh, mostly the people they 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 drinking um, they drink this wine um, uh, as the new vintage. With the new vintage, they think that uh, the wine is uh, is good uh, uh, only with the new vintage, mm -hmm. which is for me uh, a mistake because uh, uh, this grape varietal. Uh, uh, reveals uh, very nice uh, flavor and aromas uh, after one year, uh, one year and a half uh, aging in the bottle. Like uh, it's quite similar to the Vermentino or Roll mm -hmm. varietal. Uh, I like this uh, this type of varietal after one year mm -hmm. of aging. So uh, the the type of vinification of this wine is the traditional uh, white vinification, but we are working on batonnage sur lit. We are working on the lees in, in order to obtain a, a certain um, volume and fatness in, in, mm -hmm. in the wine. And, um, and you can note as well that uh, uh, you start on, on fruit, like a grapefruit and citrus at the, at the beginning of the mouth, and uh, you finish with a, a little uh, bitterness at the end, which is not uh, like almonds, or, and, it's, it's, uh, and it's very interesting and very pleasant with uh, mm -hmm. with the the with seafood and this okay. type of flavoring. Uh, genau, was er jetzt gerade gesagt hat, ist ähm, ähm, normalerweise oder viele sagen, dass der Peak Pool ganz frisch getrunken werden muss. So, so äh, wenn der neue Jahrgang raus äh, äh, kommt, dann will man auch den neuen Jahrgang trinken. Aber Jerome sagt, eigentlich findet er es ganz gut, wenn er ein Jahr auf der Flasche bleibt, weil er dann erst die Aromen richtig entwickelt und voller wird und ähm, einfach eine Entwicklung durchmacht, die äh, es viel spannender macht, als ihn es einfach so frisch wegzutrinken. Leider habe ich nichts mehr vom alten Jahrgang, also ähm, haben, können wir euch nicht mehr erbieten. Wir haben den schon ausgetrunken. <lacht> Aber vielleicht lohnt es sich, von dem hier mal eine Flasche äh, wegzulegen und sie erst nächstes Jahr zu trinken. <lacht> von daher. Ähm, und ähm, ähm, there was one word that I didn't uh, understand about the traditional uh, making and the, the method that I, I didn't know. The least I, I didn't. Uh, the least. The least it's uh, what you have. Um inside of the white uh, during the vinification ah. and uh, before the filtration we are working with this lees and uh, we move the lees inside of the white mm -hmm. wine and this work uh, it's a burgundy method uh, used as well for a lot of, um, of uh, white wines uh, done in, in burgundy mm -hmm. and um, this method give um, more volume ah. to the wine Uh, more fatness. Uh, so in the mouth, you have the feeling of something which is uh, round. round and, uh, ah, and plain, okay. not uh, something very straight okay. and, uh, and yes, direct. Yes, I, I understand. It's because um, what, what, when I tasted it right now, it was like very nice to have this this roundness at the beginning, and it makes a good mouthful that you just want the next sip, you know. It's said uh, you take one sip and you just want the next, which is good for a wine if you if you start with it. So that's right. So um, noch mal zurück. And uh, we try always to. Uh, you tr uh, just talk on. I I can translate later, or I just do it now. <laughs> um, das war das yeah. war jetzt noch mal die Erklärung <laughs> uh, uh, für für Lich. Um, um, das ist äh, quasi, ähm, dass äh, der Wein, in, in, wenn er, wenn er äh, in der Gärung ist, bewegt wird mit äh, Alben drum und dran, bevor er gefiltert wird. Und dadurch kommt eine besondere Fruchtaroma raus. Also, dass es voller wird. So, so habe ich es jetzt verstanden. <lacht> ähm, gut. <Das> ist <lacht> ähm, und äh, ähm, ich habe gerade noch mal gesagt, dass es sehr schön ist, wenn man den Wein äh, in den Mund nimmt, dass er so einlädt, den nächsten Schluck zu nehmen. Dann man nimmt so den Schluck und dann hat man so das Gefühl, oh, jetzt will ich aber den nächsten auch gleich. Genau. <lacht> Short. Ja, ich hoffe. <lacht> ähm, genau. Nein, nein, aber es ist... Äh, ähm, Tatsächlich äh, äh, ein sehr einladender Wein und der bei mir auch schon einige Fans hat.
Gibt es Fragen? So, um, uh, all our wines, uh, even in the Villa Blanche, because in the tasting we are going to taste uh, some gastronomic wines, uh, which are following in the, in the red wines uh, uh, after. So we can consider that uh, Villa Blanche uh, range is, uh, is more easy drinking wines, uh, perfect for aperitif and uh, everyday uh, consumption wines. So, um, but um, what we try is always to propose uh, to, the, um, to our customers to, to, to taste uh, wines uh, which are pairing perfectly with mm -hmm. food. And uh, it's, we, we try always to build a wine which is perfect uh, when, you are, when mm -hmm. you are eating. Um, also was wir immer versuchen, ist die Weine, gerade von der Villa Blanche-Reihe, ähm, ähm, so zu machen, dass sie gut mit Essen zusammenpassen. Dass sie äh, gut äh, zusammenpassen, äh, um sie zu essen, zu sich zu nehmen. Genau. Voila. Voila. <lacht> ähm, <lacht> so, now we come to the section where we're looking, if there are questions in the chat, if people are having certain questions. Also jetzt kommen wir zu den Fragen im Chat, falls, falls welche da sind. Zu dem noch nichts angekommen. Okay, es kam noch keine Frage zu dem Wein, aber manchmal dauert das im Chat auch ein bisschen länger, bis, bis der Chat warm läuft. Das haben wir bei den letzten zwei Proben auch schon gehabt. Um, so, uh, should we, uh, um, there's no questions in the chat, so uh, oh, we are just moving on with the second wine. So, Chardonnay. So, we are going to the Chardonnay, yes. So, um, the Chardonnay, uh, Villa Blanche, uh, I've not explained that uh, with the first wine, with the Picpoul de Pinay, because uh, it's, um, the Picpoul de Pinay uh, work more on the appellation and to give a style of the appellation of Picpoul de Pinay. But um, the other varietals uh, in the Villa Blanche range, um, it's... Uh, They are divided in two parts. Uh, you have a part of, uh, I would say, international, uh, very known varietals like uh, uh, Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc or Viognier for mm -hmm. the whites, but uh, Merlot, Syrah, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, no, 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 Cabernet no, you are, but it's an international variety. That's right. Yeah. Syrah, Merlot, uh, Pinot ah, Noir. We... Uh, and that, that is the, 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 the first uh, family of the Villa Blanche and after we have a second family with the more autochtone, more regional mm -hmm. varietals like uh, Terre mm -hmm. Blanc, Picpoul Noir which is uh, the, the, the same varietal than Picpoul de Pinay but not mm -hmm. in white but in black I remember. and uh, in red and uh, we have Marcelin as well so so all this range, Villa Blanche, is, uh, is a work on uh, single mm. varietals. Genau, äh, die Reihe, das hat er bei, beim Pink Pool noch nicht erklärt, aber das passt jetzt mit dem Chardonnay, weil es eine internationale Rebsorte ist. Ähm, das ist ähm, die Reihe Villa Blanche ist alles die äh, Rebsortenreihen Weine wie Chardonnay, wie äh, Viognier, wie ähm, äh, Merlot, wie Syrah. Ähm, die sie alle im Wein gut machen, wie auch Pinot Noir. Äh, und dann gibt es die etwas unbekannteren, also die, die Weine, die nicht so ganz international bekannt sind, wie Terret Blanc oder äh, Picpoul äh, äh, Noir. Also es gibt von Picpoul auch eine, eine rote Varietät, äh, eine Sorte, die äh, wir leider nicht im Programm haben, aber das kann ja noch kommen. Ähm, weil äh, ja, ähm, äh, die habe ich halt schon auf der Pro Wein letztes Jahr mal probiert und fand sie schon sehr spannend, aber ähm, ähm, es, wir hatten noch keinen Platz im Regal. So, uh, <lacht> we had to, to, you know, we had to first uh, make room in, 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 the, in, in our, uh, in our shop. shop before we can move in the next kind. And we decided, uh, uh, and last year we decided for the Malbec. Um, so, um, 
maybe next year the, the pig pool noir will come in. <laughs> That's great, very nice. Because it's very, it's a very interesting uh, varietal because you never see it anywhere. So it's very interesting. Yes, it is. It is. So, um, so in this range of uh, Villa Blanche, uh, we are working on single varietal, and uh, um, the idea is uh, uh, to blend inside of the same grape varietal, different profile. So it means that, for example, the Chardonnay is coming uh, maybe from Limoux part, or uh, Chardonnay can come from uh, uh, the Minerva part, or uh, different places mm -hmm. in the region. And like this, uh, we are working as well, obviously, uh, like this on the date of the harvest. So we have... Uh, Uh, some Chardonnay with a uh, lot of freshness, mm -hmm. uh, more acidity, uh, uh, and uh, some uh, Chardonnay uh, with um, more ripe. And uh, so all these profiles, some are aging of barrel, some are not. And uh, we have uh, five, six, seven mm -hmm. profiles different. And the idea every year is to blend this... Uh, different profile and to obtain uh, our recipe, our uh, profile, uh, our style of mm -hmm. uh, Chardonnay Villa Blanche. The signature Calmelin Joseph. So this, uh, this Chardonnay, obviously, so the, the, the signature, the style of the, of the wine, we obtain that because we are blend, blending mm -hmm. the different profile. So we are doing this work with all the varietals inside of this range of Villa Blanche. Uh, the process is similar with the Merlot, it's similar with the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, all the varietals inside of the Villa Blanche range is, uh, is, okay. uh, is done like also, this. Also, there are different wines... Now, how do you say this? I have a word for es sind halt verschiedene Weinberge ähm, und die verschiedenen Varietäten werden äh, zu einem Blend zusammengepackt, der äh, dann äh, genau diese äh, Struktur und den Geschmack dieser Villa Blanche Lidie ausmacht. Äh, Im Chardonnay äh, ist auch, also der ist drei Monate auf, auf, äh, auf Holz, also im Holzfass. Ähm, deswegen hat er auch diese schöne, äh, etwas äh, honigfarbene Farbe. Ähm, und ähm, ja, das macht halt diese Linie aus, diese Villa Blanche Linie. Jetzt ähm, nochmal zum äh, You can move on if you want uh, with the taste of the Villa of the Chardonnay. Oh, the, ta the taste of the Chardonnay is a uh Is a, is a mix of um, a plain Chardonnay at the beginning of the mouth, where we find uh, the, the, the typical aromas of, uh, of Chardonnay. So it's, uh, there is no doubt uh, when you are tasting this uh, Chardonnay about the varietal. And after, um, we try always to obtain something uh, with a certain uh, uh, tension at the end of the mouth, a certain of... Uh, Uh, something uh, not horizontal mm -hmm. but vertical, something uh, uh, the, the, yeah. the mouth has to climb uh, in order to have a, a nice fresh mm -hmm. taste at the end of the mouth. And the wood, uh, we can taste obviously that uh, the, 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 the wine is, uh, is a, a 20 30% in the blend age uh, in uh, oak barrels, but, uh, but the, the, the presence of the wood is not so so much okay. so so important so it's uh, it's one of the most uh, successful uh, wine in the in the Villa Blanche range it's, really well, awesome. it's, it's uh, also the best sold uh, Villa Blanche i have uh, chardonnay is the best running <laughs> so um, everywhere everywhere yes i think it was sold out last uh, last uh, autumn right <laughs> that's yes. true that's true 
Also äh, Chardonnay ist die am besten laufendste ja. Sorte in der Villa Blanche Reihe, auch bei mir. Äh, und äh, ist, ähm, ungefähr 30, 40 Prozent davon äh, sind im Holzfass und der Rest mhm. ist, ist so. Und es macht so ein... Es, äh, äh, was er eben so schön gesagt hat, ähm, äh, der Geschmack muss hochklettern. Also ähm, man muss so ein bisschen so, es fängt ganz leicht an, wie so ein Chardonnay halt ist, so ein bisschen blumig, so ein bisschen fruchtig. Und dann kommt aber einfach noch so ein Volumen hinterher, was es einfach sehr lang anhalten macht und sehr angenehm, den, den nächsten Schluck zu nehmen. So. Äh, ähm, und äh, wie gesagt, auch bei mir einer der erfolgreichsten der Reihe. So, um, Wir haben einen Chat, soll ich da mal rübergehen? Ja, yeah. so there are questions in the chat now. Die, ähm, die Frage okay. war ja, der Wein ist zum Essen, ja. äh, zu welchem Gericht? Um, the, the question is, uh, which uh, uh, food uh, combines the best with the Chardonnay? Oh, you, uh, you can uh, you can eat um, uh, this type of chardonnay with uh, fish, but uh, fish uh, with uh, sauce, not uh, not fish uh, just uh, grilled. Or uh, uh, you, you need uh, you need the fish uh, with a certain um, uh, mm -hmm. yes consistency level of uh, uh -huh. of power. You can eat. You can eat that uh, with all type of um, uh, 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 chicken or chicken or uh, uh, white uh, white meat. Ah, okay. White meat. White meat. Uh, it's it's uh, it's pairing very well, um, and obviously mm -hmm. some cheese as well. Uh, like with tapas as well, and for the aperitif as well. So. It's a very easy drinking Chardonnay, which you can combine with different yes. plates. Also, Sie haben gerade gesagt, es passt sehr gut zu Fisch, aber es muss ein Fisch sein, der in einer Soße ist. Kein, kein gegrillter Fisch in dem Fall. Oder auch zu ähm, Hähnchengerichten ähm, und äh, äh, zu solcherlei Sachen. Oder zu Tapas auch. Könnt ihr euch vielleicht alles vorstellen. Ich habe jetzt leider gerade keine da und habe gerade Hunger gekriegt. Ähm, das gehört dazu. Ähm, ihr könnt ja in den Chat mal schreiben, was ihr gerade esst zu unserer Weinprobe. Und äh, Sosa, welche der Weine hast du im Sort Sortiment? Ich habe den Chardonnay, ich habe den Picpoul de Pinay, aber ich habe den Picpoul äh, Noir gerade noch nicht. Vielleicht habe ich den bei der nächsten Bestellung, wenn ganz viele hier Leute hier schreien und ihn haben wollen und ausprobieren wollen. Ähm. Und Chorosi ja? auch. Ja, den habe ich auch Sie da, auch. natürlich. Den probieren wir ja gleich. Um, there was a question in the chat, just to explain, uh, uh, which of the wines wasn't there? Because I didn't understand the Pic Poul Noir uh, uh, like right away. But uh, um, I was explaining that I don't have the Pic Poul Noir right now. But if, I, uh, if they all uh, scream they want it, the, uh, I will order it with my next pet palette. Excellent. Okay, great. So, <laughs> special order. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, should we move on? Uh, should we change the color to rosé now? Yeah, good that's idea. It's really one of my favorites. I ha favorites, I have to say, because uh, um, when it first came out, it was just you know so surprising that there was such a nice rosé coming um, and I think it, it won a prize like in the first year you brought it out. Is that right? Do I remember that right? Okay, I think when the, said, the Grenache uh, first came out, um, it, it like uh, in the first year or the second it just won a prize. Uh, in, in the beginning, like it was, re it, it, it it had a reward. Um, uh, it was a, uh, didn't it win a reward like just when it came out? Uh, was there like the the vintage that you brought out, the, like years ago? It's a long time now, but I think there was like a, a um, uh, um, there was like some some. Oh, the sound is gone. 
No, the last the, one of the first mean? vintages that came when, when the rosé first came out. I think there was like a, um, a price on it, like right away when it came out. There was like uh, 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 yes, it's a long time, maybe. so I don't. I'm not really sure if I remember right. <laughs> we have quite, yes, we have quite good uh, awards and. Uh, and, uh, and medals, yes. Uh, so I don't remember exactly what we obtained with the Grenache, it, but uh, yes, it's, it's possible. It's possible. But um, I, I, I'm, you know, I was just saying it's one of my favorites. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, um, how is it said in English? Uh, I'm, uh, I always, I'm already taken with this wine. Uh, uh, I don't have to be convinced because <laughs> I like it very yeah. much. <laughs> That it's good. Okay, so the rosé, uh, we are going to taste two rosé. Uh, we are not, we are not producing um, many rosé wine. So uh, we have um, focused on um, two type of rosé. One rosé which is um, uh, concentrated on one grape varietal, which is the Grenache. Uh, and the second one that we are going to taste just after is a, is a blend. Uh, so um, uh, here we are concentrated on the because we are in Villa Blanche, so we are concentrated on the on the single mm -hmm. varietal of Grenache. And uh, what it is uh, interesting here is that we have a, a blend which is made with Grenache gris and uh, and Grenache mm -hmm. uh, black. Grenache noir and Grenache uh, gris. Gray. Uh, the Grenache gris, uh, gray is is not uh, in general uh, used for the mm -hmm. for the rosé wine. It's more uh, uh, introduced inside of uh, of a blend of uh, white wines. But uh, we think it's uh, um, it's very interesting in the rosé because it gives a, a certain complexity uh, and. Uh, and it's a very elegant uh, grape varietal, the, mm -hmm. the, the Grenache Grey, and uh, it gives something different to uh, to the um, uh, rosé uh, uh, at 100% made with the Grenache in the region. So uh, for us, uh, it, it gives something more, and uh, we, we continue to. To work on this, uh, on this also der Grenache ist nicht nur ein einfacher Grenache, sondern es ist eine Mischung aus Grenache und Grenache Gris. Das sind zwei verschiedene Rebsorten äh, und es ist sehr ungewöhnlich, dass man die zusammen mischt, ähm, weil es ist eine Rotweinsorte und eine Weißweinsorte. Ähm, normalerweise wird der Grenache Gris gar nicht Rebsorten rein in irgendeiner Weise verwendet, sondern immer in irgendwelchen weißwein cuvées ähm, in, dass es hier in dem, in dem Blend drin ist, ist ein bisschen ungewöhnlich, aber es gibt eben auch dieses Besondere etwas. So, I, I was just translating, so I hope I did it right. <laughs> yes, it's perfect, so sad. That's, that's very good to know. I'm not doing that so often, you know. <laughs> It's a very difficult exercise. So, so rosé, um, it's perfect for the summer period, uh, and uh, it's perfect with uh, what we what we eat um, uh, during the, the 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 summer period, like uh, uh, barbecue, uh, mm -hmm. grilled meat, uh, all the vegetables, mm -hmm. tomatoes, uh, uh, eggplants, uh, all these kind of. Uh, uh, typical summer mm -hmm. vegetables and um, all the all the all the food is um, uh, is is, uh, is is nice with uh, with uh, uh, rosé served mm -hmm. at the right temperature uh, during the during the summer. Also, es ist ein ausgesprochener Sommerwein, der super so. passt, wenn man äh, grillt und Barbecue macht und draußen sitzt und einfach Essen genießt, wie es im Sommer halt auf den Tisch kommt. Gegrilltes Gemüse, äh, alles, was vom Grill kommt ähm, und dann lausche ich in der Sonne sitzen. <lacht> A holiday wine. Ein Ferienwein. 
<rire> so. So the production as well, uh, the, uh, how we do the, the, this wine is uh, similar to the Chardonnay. So it's a um, different profile again of, uh, of Grenache. But here it's a blend of two different uh, varietals, uh, even if they, are, they have the same name. It's, uh, it's not the same grape, uh, black Grenache and uh, grey Grenache. But uh, the, the, the work uh, is, uh, is similar. We, we, we go in different places where we can uh, produce uh, the, 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 the right grapes uh, in order to, 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 to blend these different profiles. Following uh, following a recipe that uh, we try to to do uh, uh, from one vintage to the other. Also, es werden verschiedene äh, ähm, Varietäten, äh, 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 verschiedene Sorten äh, der gleichen Rebsorte zusammengemischt, um ähm, ein gesch ge bestimmtes Geschmacksprofil zu erreichen, um es auch jedes Jahr zu erreichen aus verschiedenen Weinbergen gemischt ähm, und ähm, Uh, so should we move to the to taste now that because I really like that it has such a nice minerality in the end but that's just my personal impression and yes. what I like so um, maybe you can tell a little bit more about the taste <laughs> no but um, um, uh, the, the, the rosé made uh, from varietals like uh, Grenache or Senso But Grenache gives more complexity than, than Senso. But uh, we like the Grenache because it gives a lot of uh, roundness and fruitness. And you find uh, uh, little uh, red fruits uh, in, um, in, this, uh, in the taste. And you are right. It's, uh, you have um, uh, a nice finish uh, with a, a nice freshness at the end. And, uh, but... It's a, it's a signature of, uh, of our wines, the freshness at the end of the mouth. Uh, it's what we try always to obtain. We, we want always a nice uh, uh, level of uh, acidity, uh, minerality uh, in our wines, because uh, like this, they are, they, they are perfect for pairing with food. And at the same time, uh, they are aging perfectly yeah. in the bottle. Also das ist auch wieder so, so was sie gerne äh, äh, erreichen wollen mit ihren Weinen, dass am Ende eine schöne Frische und eine leichte Mineralität und ein bisschen Säure auch ist, weil sie ein, äh, 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 weil das einfach so eine Frische äh, äh, gibt, die äh, schön ist in dem Wein und die auch natürlich einlädt zum nächsten Schluck, was ja auch irgendwie Sinn der Sache ist. Ne? <lacht> so. It's very well structured and it's a little bit uh, fruity mm -hmm. and spicy. So uh, it's a very, it's not too complex, but it's very, a uh, very good mm -hmm. wine to eat with. So, gibt es Fragen im Chat? Zu dem eher nicht. Maybe it's, uh, um, I, I was just asking if there are uh, questions in the chat, but uh, maybe it's uh, because we had no summer in the last two days, because it was raining all the time, that it doesn't, you know, nobody has a summer feeling right now because we were drowning in rain the last two days. But it was good rain for the, the land, you know, so everybody was waiting for it. Yeah. All the gardens wanted yeah. water, so it, it was perfect. But um, it, the summer feeling le just left us for two days now. <laughs> so, if there is no if there is no question, Susa, maybe it's because of the weather, or it's because I've I've said everything. All the information yes. has been given <laughs> in my, yeah, in my presentation. Yeah, probably. Huh? Um, I will translate. So. Um, um, er sagte gerade, vielleicht gibt es keine Fragen, weil er alles so perfekt erklärt hat. Und um, ich würde sagen, um, um, probieren wir doch einfach im Vergleich den anderen Rosé, weil dann uh, um, haben wir noch eine, uh, um, können wir das gleich nochmal ein bisschen vergleichen, was uh, ein Cuvée im Vergleich zu so einem Grenache uh, uh, reinsortig ist. Um, um, I was just saying, so it's a perfect move to the next Rosé to, to compare them to each other. <lacht> Mm -hmm. If I can open it, yes. 
Pourquoi so the, the difference between the two wines is that one is in uh, Vin de Pays d'Oc, it's a varietal wine, and the other one is an AOP wine, so it's a blend of several mm -hmm. varietals. So then Joe yeah. is going to talk about that. Also das eine ist ein, ein AOP, also Appellation Original per, uh, I don't know the words exactly, uh, Protected, prote protégé, ja, yeah, genau. Also es ist eine, eine ähm, äh, geschützte Herkunftsbezeichnung, um es äh, so zu übersetzen, ähm, was in Frankreich und auch in Italien, also in eigentlich allen Weinbaugebieten immer sehr wichtig ist, dass es ähm, eine geschützte Herkunftsbezeichnung ist. Ähm, das äh, kommt, kommt äh, in den Weinproben ja auch öfter vor, dass ich das erkläre. Ähm, genau. Das ist jetzt der äh, Cheres oder Cere? How do you say, say it? Ceres, okay. Ceres. Ceres, it's a antique, uh, antique uh, DS. Ah, uh, goodness. Uh, uh, yeah. Goodness. So it's an antique goodness of the agriculture mm -hmm. and um, and uh, mm -hmm. harvest as well. And uh, as well, it's a very old varietal mm -hmm. of roses. Oh. oh. And the name Ceres is a, yes, a very old okay. varietal um, of uh, roses. Ceres is eine uh, antike Göttin uh, der uh, um, Landwirtschaft und des Erntens. Um, aber auch eine uh, alte Sorte, eine alte Rosensorte in Frankreich, die so heißt. Um, also ein besonderer Name. I'm just checking my, for my notes okay. so I can talk as well. I don't. F so I know what I'm doing. So now I have it. So um, it's. Um, um, es, ähm, der Wein besteht aus 40% Mouvetre, 30% Cinso und äh, 30% Grenache Noir. So it's, um, it's 40%, 40% Mouvetre? Uh, 30% Cinso and uh, 30% Grenache Noir? Perfect. That's true. I can read, yes. And uh, uh, it's a blend of uh, varietals that you find um, in, uh, in, in South of France, in Provence, uh, in Bandol, mm -hmm. uh, in different places. And, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blend which is, uh, uh, which is very interesting. And uh, so the, the, the structure of the rosé is, um, I would say, is, you, you, you win in complexity here. You have more complexity. And, uh, and the wine is, uh, I would say, a little bit more interesting than the, 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 mm -hmm. the Villa Blanche Grenache which is more simple, easy drinking, and uh, good for the aperitif. And, uh, but here, uh, if you want to, to open a, a bottle of uh, rosé wine and you want some uh, uh, interesting flavors, uh, mm -hmm. interesting uh, aromas, if you want to, uh, to, to, to drink uh, a rosé a little bit different than uh, what it is uh, offered uh, somewhere else, uh, yes, it's, it's what we have tried to do with the, also, with the Ceres. And express yes. nose as well. So, um, uh, was Sie versucht haben, mit dem Rosé zu machen, ist, dass er ein bisschen expressiver und aufregender ist als um, der normale uh, 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 Villa Blanche um, und auch ein bisschen mehr Tiefe hat und ein bisschen mehr Länge und ein bisschen ein besonderer Rosé ist. Die Rebsorten sind alles äh, Rebsorten, die in, in anderen Teilen Frankreichs auch vorkommen, aber ähm, äh, einfach auch eine besondere Note reingeben. And we should talk about what, what the name Amstram Gramm means. So, to, to explain it to our customer. <lacht> <lacht> uh, Amstram Gramm is a, is a name of a song, of a a uh, child song in France, um, and it's known in the, um, in the English countries uh, with the song Eni Yes, Meni, in Germany Meni, it's Eni Mene Mist, es rappelt in der Kiste. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
So uh, I think it. So this uh, this range, well, it's a uh, it's a funny uh, and uh, and uh, uh, nice name that we have decided to, to to give to the to this range. But in fact, the idea of this range is uh, we have worked for many years with uh, Laurent on the languedoc Roussillon appellation, and we are proud to continue to work on this appellation, and uh, we will continue in the future, obviously, to work on the, on the appellation. We are proud as well to have created a, a range uh, of like Villa Blanche uh, with single varietals, uh, with their own personality and their own uh, identity, mm -hmm. completely different that uh, we can find uh, 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 in the other range, uh, like uh, Chardonnay or Merlot, obviously. But um, we wanted uh, as well to to be uh, free to go on on blends, uh, not dictated by the appellation, or to work uh, on something. Uh, I would say uh, um, on on side of the of the road, not uh, not. Uh, uh, where we can create something different mm -hmm. and uh, and not uh, not similar and so we have created yes Ceres which is certainly the most uh, academic uh, wine of um, of the Amsterdam Gram range but uh, Epicurious for example is um, it's a blend of uh, Petit mm -hmm. Verdot and Malbec. Uh, the, the Cartier Libre is a work on the Claret du Languedoc uh, varietal, which is quite a known mm -hmm. uh, varietal. So all these wines, uh, it's a sort of experience and uh, and uh, and, uh, and discovery of uh, a different road that we have not uh, taken with uh, with Laurent and uh, and not be uh, inside of. Uh, Uh, mm -hmm. all 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 genau, um es zu erklären, äh, Laurent äh, äh, hat diese Weine äh, äh, kombiniert aus verschiedenen Rebsorten, um mal etwas anderes zu machen, um was Besonderes zu machen. Äh, und äh, äh, dieses Amsterdam Gramm ist quasi die, äh, der Abzählreim im, im Französischen. So wie bei uns Ene Minimistis rappelt in der Kiste, gibt es das in Frankreich, gibt es das in England. Äh, äh, und um äh, die Weine da äh, spannender äh, äh, mal was auszuprobieren und die Appellation äh, besonders zu machen äh, und die Geschmäcker noch mal besonders. Es gibt drei verschiedene. Es gibt einen weißen, einen rosé und einen roten. Der Lepigurius ist der rote, der ähm, weiße. Ähm, also wir haben alle drei Sorten da. Äh, könnt, wenn ihr neugierig geworden seid, könnt ihr auch mal den äh, weißen oder den roten probieren. Ähm, ähm, es ist auf jeden Fall eine sehr spannende Reihe, äh, die das äh, Ganze mal äh, äh, ein bisschen anders beleuchtet und ein bisschen ab von dem normalen Weg geht, äh, um mal äh, einen besonderen Weg auszuprobieren. Uh, I just ex tried to ex uh, um, translate what you said before. So. But the translation is very good, Sosa. It's a really a very creative range. Uh, The profile of the wines and the yes. labels as well. So it's a, mm -hmm. a free expression. I remember range. when we visited the wine yard, and because uh, uh, um, uh, I was there in, uh, and I looked it up. It was before you had the domain. It was uh, in 2014. Um, we visited and we did like our own blending in the vineyard in the vineyard. If you remember. We did like uh, like our own blends. Uh, it was a um, travel with other winemakers to explain to my customer, and and it was really interesting. So um, this is I, I imagine that uh, there must be a lot of work to come to 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 the right uh, um, uh, combination of the different grapes. So it because um, I remember this uh, trying it out myself uh, it was like oh my god what should I do so many options so many possibilities what do I do and I think there's just a lot of work in such a great in, in, in such a uh, cuvee so <laughs> um, I no no you are right you are right uh, Susa it's true that uh, um, I would say um What it is difficult in the creation of a wine is um, obviously 
to obtain uh, and to get uh, some uh, beautiful grapes from the vineyard. But that, unfortunately, uh, is difficult to control everything because the nature is there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you can do what you want sometimes. Uh, you, you will have the grape that the nature is, is, uh, want to give you. So it's, uh, it's difficult to control that. But if you are lucky and if you obtain the grapes that, uh, that which are perfect, I would say that vinification of the of the grapes in in white or in red, uh, as soon as the grapes are good, uh, you will obtain uh, mm -hmm. you will obtain a good wine. You will obtain a good single varietal. It's not mm -hmm. uh, it's not a big problem. And uh, and after all the all the difficulty mm -hmm. is uh, is to blend and. Uh, if you want to obtain uh, something with uh, complexity, if you want that your wine is aging properly in bottle and uh, that you taste it uh, in uh, many years, uh, and uh, if you want that your wine is a nice evolution in the, in the time, uh, you need to blend perfectly. And, uh, and, uh, and the blend is, um, yes, it's a... Uh, it's uh, an experience. Uh, uh, it's the experience. Is uh, you taste and you taste and uh, and you try and uh, and you see if it's uh, working like this or not. And uh, and from one region to the other and step by step, little by little, like this, you you get the experience to to obtain uh, to obtain uh, a yes. good blend. But it's a lot of work. So I explain to my customers in German now. Because um, also in uh, 2014 war ich auf dem Weingut. Das war noch bevor es die Domain gab. Äh, und äh, äh, das war eine Reise mit anderen Weinhändlern. Und es war sehr spannend, weil äh, wir durften unseren eigenen, eigenen Blend machen. Ähm, wir hatten äh, drei oder vier Rebsorten und äh, so eine so ein, so ein, so ein so ein, äh, eigentlich aus der Chemie, so ein, so ein Mischteil mit einer Skala. Und dann haben wir halt in Prozenten unsere Weine selber gemischt. Und äh, das war natürlich super spannend. Aber was jemand, der mit ähm, sehr viel mehr äh, Wissen daran geht, auch noch im Hinterkopf hat, ist nicht nur, ich mische jetzt was, was mir jetzt sozusagen in der Mischung gut schmeckt, sondern er imaginiert sozusagen auch schon, wie schmeckt das, wenn das jetzt ein oder zwei oder drei Jahre auf der Flasche war. Das ist auch noch mit in dem Blending drin, das Wissen und äh, das quasi das, die Vorausschau. Und das fand ich damals schon sehr faszinierend. Und das hat er eben auch nochmal erklärt, dass das mit dazugehört, so ein Blend zu machen und was auch die kreative Arbeit ausmacht und die Spannung dabei, sowas zu kreieren, um da wirklich was, dass da ein tolles Ergebnis kommt. Ähm, und das durfte ich damals halt ähm, in Grundzügen mal erfahren und das war super spannend. Also das war damals wirklich äh, ein Geschenk. Ähm, am Ende der Weinprobe zeigen wir auch nochmal ein paar Fotos von der Reise, die habe ich nochmal rausgesucht. Damals war Ariane dabei. Ähm, das war äh, äh, wirklich eine sehr spannende Reise, da habe ich sehr viel gelernt. So, um, are there questions? Uh, sind da Qua Fragen im Chat? Um, the chat want to see the picture behind you in a whole size. If you can uh, move the camera, uh, the, the blue of the picture is the same blue from the bottle. Can it be? Yes, it's exactly oh. the same blue as in the, on, on the bottle. <laughs> so. It's a. It's a local painter, uh, English one, uh, and uh, uh, it's a it's a paint it's a painter that I appreciate and um, and I bought I, I bought it uh, not, not it's not a long time that uh, mm -hmm. he entered in the house so uh, it's a new it's a new one we have a lot of painting here uh, but uh, and I like paint. The, the painters and uh, but um, this one yes is a is a new okay. one and I have not calculated the color of the capsule and uh, <laughs> and the painting behind but it fits very well <laughs> Also es ist ein lokaler äh, äh, englischer äh, äh, Maler der äh, in der Gegend äh, äh, wohl auch wohnt. 
Nous sommes dans Je suis Und äh, die Farbe von der Flasche und das äh, Painting ist Zufall und nicht vorausberechnet, um das nochmal zu übersetzen. <lacht> genau. So. Schon viel Chat. Are there some questions? Are there some questions? That was the only question. I wanted Not to see the picture. <laughs> okay. So, Please. shall we move to the red ones? Okay. Dans quel ordre? Euh, celui-là. Le vieux plan. I really like the, the, the nose of this one, by the way. Und äh, ähm, in, in der ersten Probe hatte ich ja eine unsichtbare Weinelfe, die mir mysteriös immer die Gläser füllte. Und dies Jahr, diesmal ist sie zurück. Äh, es ist sehr praktisch. Vielen, vielen Dank. <lacht> um, I, um, I was just explaining, uh, in the first tasting I had a wine elf who was like mysteriously filling my glasses. Um, and whoop, I had a filled glass. And in the second, I had to do everything on my own. And now I have the wine elf back. <laughs> the mysterious appearing glasses. Also. So, now it's uh, um, Vieux Carignan, der fünfte Wein. Yeah, so now... Now we enter in the in a work which is uh, uh, different for us with Laurent because we we are working on the uh, not on the varietal not on the blend of different varietals uh, but uh, what we try is uh, is to work mm -hmm. on the terroir here so uh, on the on the climate on the soil and. Um, Uh, in the region, uh, what it is fantastic is, uh, is this region is a sort of uh, uh, El Dorado because uh, Languedoc Roussillon is, uh, is uh, I would say, a new region compared to a uh, old region in France like uh, Burgundy, Bordeaux, uh, and mm -hmm. even Côte du Rhône. Uh, but um, this new region, uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, place. Uh, in order to create um, uh, different wines, because uh, we have all the varietals at our disposal. We have uh, um, uh, a complex and very different appellation inside of the uh, of the of the region of Languedoc Roussillon. It's impossible. It's one of the most important uh, region in the world. It's uh, really uh, it's where we are producing. Uh, the most uh, important quantity of wine in the world. Uh, so uh, uh, you can find, obviously, uh, not very good wines, but uh, on side of that, you are going to find uh, a fantastic and uh, incredible, uh, incredible wines. And, um, and a region like uh, Côte du Roussillon village is obviously completely different than Terrasse du Larzac. Terrasse du Larzac is uh, different than Limou, Limou, is different than uh, Corbière or saint chinian uh, So you have uh, plenty soils, plenty climate, mm -hmm. plenty environment. Uh, and this, um, this place is fantastic for that because uh, it allows us to, to create uh, different wines. And, uh, and we are free as well because uh, we are not uh, uh, inside of uh, an history, uh, mm -hmm. an heavy history mm -hmm. of a region. Uh, if you are in Merceau region or uh, in Burgundy or, I don't know, in Grave uh, uh, of Bordeaux, Saint-Emilion or this, you, are, you have to, to, to create uh, a Merceau like uh, uh, mm -hmm. your father or your grandfather or all the old regi regi uh, uh, yeah. generation uh, were doing mm -hmm. the, the, the Merceau. And it's quite complicated for the young generation to change mm -hmm. the style of a wine. Here in Languedoc Roussillon, we are we are really in uh, in uh, in a free uh, in a free region where the creation is uh, is uh, is completely open and and you can 
give a style of the wine uh, as, uh, as you want. So, uh, with the, the, the Vieux Carignan here, Les Terroirs, we enter... Ah, yes, maybe... Yes, I translate, to, translate some, translate. Um, no, if no, I sorry. remember everything. Uh, um, das Schöne am uh, um, Languedoc, Roussillon, ist, dass es eine junge Region ist. Es ist keine so eine traditionelle wie das Burgund oder, oder Bordeaux oder Merceau oder ähm, andere alte Weinbauregionen in Frankreich. Die sind darauf angewiesen, dass sie genau den Wein machen, wie Papa es gemacht hat und wie Opa es gemacht hat und wie alle Generationen es davor gemacht hat. Und da hat das Languedoc sehr viel mehr Freiheit. Die können quasi kreativ sein, die können ihre eigenen Wege gehen, die können andere Blends machen, die müssen sich nicht an die Regeln halten, sondern die dürfen frei kreieren. Und dadurch kommen da ähm, einfach sehr, sehr schöne Sachen bei raus. Ähm, es ist auch so, dass das Languedoc lange Zeit ein, ein Gebiet war, das... Ähm, hauptsächlich Mengen produziert hat, aber keine Lagen oder keine, keine äh, besonderen Weine. Und hier in dieser Reihe mit dem Vieux Corignon ähm, legen sie Wert auf das Terroir, also quasi auf den Boden, auf die Erde, wo, das, wo der Wein herkommt und äh, was er da quasi äh, ähm, mit reinbringt. So, ähm, ähm, es ist halt äh, traditionell sehr, sehr spannend, was äh, äh, ähm, im Languedoc alles möglich ist. Es kann halt viel kreativer Wein gemacht werden als in den traditionellen Weinbaugebieten. Äh, an, an das ist halt das Schöne am Languedoc, Rossillon. So. Uh, so, the, the, um, so, in fact, uh, we, we are starting with uh, Les Terroirs, uh, Les Terroirs mm -hmm. Range. Um, so, Uh, Vieux Carignan is uh, one of the six terroir uh, wines yeah, that uh, hab, we are I, creating. Uh, I have four of them. Ich habe bei mir im Programm vier davon, von den sechs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, after, uh, so what it is interesting in this, uh, in this range is, uh, is in fact that, uh, well, unless the Vieux Carignan, which is uh, a single varietal, it's a uh, Why we have introduced the Vieux Carignan inside of uh, uh, the, the, the terroir range is because Vieux Carignan is the emblematic grape varietal of our region. And uh, we think that um, uh, we have one of the most beautiful uh, old Carignan vines uh, in, mm -hmm. in Languedoc-Roussillon. And uh, even if um, Carignan was uh, considered at, uh, in the past as a not very qualitative grape, mm. uh, we can see here with this bottle, for example, that uh, uh, when you have a, a Carignan uh, of uh, 100, more than 100 uh, years mm. uh, old, uh, it means that... Um, Uh, you obtain a very low yield uh, in terms of uh, grapes. So we are at something like uh, 20, uh, between uh, 20 and 25 hectoliters per, uh, per hectare. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very low yield. And, uh, and like this, you can obtain a very interesting uh, and a typicity of, uh, of the Languedoc-Roussillon in terms of red wines. So, um, so, This emblematic grape varietal, we wanted to, uh, to present it uh, as uh, sim enfin, it's similar for us than, uh, than the, the, the main appellation in Languedoc-Roussillon. So the five of the wines, they are saint chinian fougère Minervois-Corbière and Côte-du-Roussillon-Village, which are the, the, the main appellation in, in Languedoc-Roussillon. And, uh, and, the, and the idea is to blend Syrah Grenache Carignan, uh, very traditional vinification, no oak barrel, nothing, uh, and to show that with the same blend, you obtain a completely complete different expression. 
because of the terroir. Mm-hmm. Okay, try, I, I will try to remember everything to translate. Also, äh, in diesem Wein ist, ein, ist 100% Carignan und das Vieux ist äh, quasi, es äh, ähm, heißt Alter Carignan, wenn man es direkt übersetzt. Ähm, weil da sind zum Teil sehr alte Reben drin, äh, zum Teil 100 Jahre alt, äh, die dem Ganzen so eine Tiefe geben, die, was aber auch bedeutet, dass es eine sehr niedrige Ernte ist. Ähm, äh, zum Teil nur z- äh, zwei, äh, ja, 2500 Liter, also wenn man es äh, runterrechnet. Also Hektar, 2,5 Hektoliter müssten 2500 Liter sein, wenn ich das richtig in Erinnerung habe. Ähm, was sehr wenig ist pro, pro Hektar. Ähm, äh, halt, äh, weil diese alten Reben einfach zwar sehr intensive Reben in, äh, produzieren, aber halt nicht viele. Ähm, und ähm, die normalen, das normale Blend in der Gegend, was halt für Fougère, für, für äh, ähm, Saint-Gignon, für Corbière und für die, Al- für die anderen verschiedenen Varietäten, die, äh, 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 die es halt auch in der Flasche gibt, sind, ist halt Carignan, Syrah und, äh, what was the third one? Carignan, Syrah and... Grenache, sorry. I I forgot the Grenache, I don't know why. (lacht) Äh, ähm, Normalerweise wird aus diesen drei Rebsorten ähm, der Blend gemacht. Und ähm, was halt wichtig bei diesen Weinen ist, es kommt immer was anderes bei raus wegen dem Terroir. Also die Erde, auf der er steht, der Ort, an dem er steht. Ähm, Aber der Vieux Carignan ist halt besonders, weil es halt eine eine, eine Rebsortenreine Sache ist. I, I hope I explained it well. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it was very nice. Huh? It, it was great, Susa. Okay. It was great. Then it's good, because uh, uh, um, I, I, I'm always scared that I forget something. <laughs> so this Carignan, the, the people can see that um, behind the, 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 the name of uh, Carignan, Vieux Carignan, It's written IGP Côte du Briam. Mm-hmm. So, why it's written IGP Côte du Briam? Because uh, it's a wine which is produced in the Minervo appellation. Mm-hmm. So, it's a part of the Minervo appellation. And it could be a Minervo if we have blended this Carignan with Syrah and Grenache. But in fact, it's a plain, it's a, a single varietal inside of this bottle. It's just uh, Carignan. So it's, it can be a AOP. So it's a EGP Côte du Briand. And EGP Côte du Briand, it's a, a, a small region called EGP inside of the Minervo appellation. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to annoy people, but uh, it's just to explain Uh, how we classify a little bit the the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the wines in, uh, in France. It makes a lot of sense. So, um ähm, der Vieux Carignan wäre eigentlich ein Teil der Minervois Appellation, äh, ähm, aber ähm, da es nur eine ähm, Rebsorten, weil der Rebsorten rein ist ähm, und es aus einem ganz bestimmten Gebiet äh, innerhalb dieser Appellation ist, ähm, ähm, nämlich dieses EGP äh, Côte du Brian, das ist einfach eine kleine Gemeinde darin, deswegen steht das extra nochmal drauf, weil es halt wichtig ist, das nochmal zu betonen, weil sonst ist es, sonst könnte es überall her sein. Sein. Aber es ist halt ähm, auf diesem einen äh, geografischen Punkt begrenzt, sonst dürfte es nicht so heißen. Perfekt. <lacht> We have questions. Um, there are questions in the chat. Yep. Um, some of your wines got a uh, cork, one of them got a uh, s- screw uh, of it. Why? Okay. Why it d- depends? Yeah, ah, for, why? F- for example, the rosé, the, the uh, Villa Blanche is uh, a screw and the um, Cheres is uh, a cork. So why is there a difference in the, in the opening? <laughs> This is the fault of uh, French people. Okay. Because, uh, in fact, we are very traditional in France. And uh, we, we think that uh, um, 
AOP wine or a wine which is uh, um, uh, destined to, to be aged, uh, as as you you have to, to uh, you need to to, to, to to put a cork. So um, so we continue to to put a cork on on this level of wines. So the AOP wines, the wines. Uh, which are destined to, to, to be aged in bottle, or they can be aged in bottle. I don't know how you can mm -hmm. say that, but this is, a, this is a traditional way of thinking. But uh, uh, in fact, if you check on the... On the international market? Uh, yes, on the on international market, obviously, but on a natural way. Uh, if you are thinking just on the, on the results of... Uh, of uh, of uh, what you are obtaining for wine, uh, you, you we, there is a lot of studies. They show that uh, a screw cap is uh, is working very well as well. So mm -hmm. uh, you have um, uh, some studies uh, uh, which have been done for uh, in different regions, like uh, in Alsace, even in Germany, yes, uh, with uh, uh, screw cap uh, bottle, and they are aging perfectly after ten years or. Uh, yep. 12 years or 15 years and uh, and uh, and there is no difference or big difference between a, um, a wine the, the same wine uh, uh, corked or, or or with a cork or with a screw cap yes i think it's always a, a question of tradition and what the people are used to like i know for example in austria most of the things are done with screw because they they introduced it early and people are are used to it. Um, yeah, right. In Australia, we are working with uh, Australian people, and they and they say uh, uh, if you uh, change uh, all your wines in screw cap, we will sell the double. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I said yes, but you are the only country uh, who is saying that, so it's difficult for me. To change all my range in uh, in screw cap just uh, for Australian country, but uh, it's true. Uh, it's a, it's a, a difficult um, debat. It's it's something uh, which is not uh, which is not easy. The the, the vision of the people, uh, how they how they uh, imagine the wine, sometimes is uh, is more important. And and I can understand that because uh, how we see the imagination of a wine and uh, and the spirit of a wine can be compared to uh, uh, st scientific studies uh, because uh, a wine is a dream at the same time. It's uh, it's something. It yes, it's an environment. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, what you imagine about a wine. Uh, uh, what you would like to drink and uh, a label uh, when you when you see a label sometime uh, uh, you imagine that you are going to taste um, a fantastic wine and mm. and even if the wine is not so fantastic because it's not usual it's very rare and uh, uh, but you say yes it's uh, it's a fantastic wine because uh, because it's a dream to drink it mm -hmm. so it's important at the same time yeah. To continue that, to continue the dream. <laughs> How is, is the connection to the vineyard? Does it belong to one of your families or did, did you uh, get in some, somewhere? somewhere? Huh? Yes, uh, part of my family, yes, was involved in the, in the wine, but uh, I have started my business by, uh, by my own. My father was not uh, my my father or my mother was not uh, involved in the in the wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's also the questions which uh, uh, um, kind of food fit, fits to this wine. Ah, with the carignan. Yes. All, all the all the traditional uh, food uh, that we have in France, uh, it's perfect. Obviously, uh, regional. Uh, uh, food like uh, cassoulet, oh. uh, uh, <laughs> you see it's working perfectly, but uh, any kind of uh, meat, beef, uh, uh, charcuterie, uh, sausage, uh, cheese, uh, as well. cheese as well, mm. and uh, it's more, 
I would say, uh, but even for the barbecue uh, during the winter, uh, during the, the, the summer, sorry, it's, 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 it's pairing well. It's pairing yeah. well. It's a very nice one. I like the length and the fullness. Mm. In the blend of Syrah, Grenache and Carignan, the Carignan represents the, the backbone of, uh, of a wine. We say that uh, uh, you, you, if you want to, 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 to build a blend, you need the backbone. You need mm -hmm. something which is uh, straight and after you, you will add uh, some spices with the Syrah and some fruitness mm -hmm. with the Grenache and uh, some, uh, I don't know, uh, some uh, different things with the Mourvedre yeah. and the Senso, but, but the backbone uh, is given usually in the region by the Carignan. Carignan okay. gives uh, uh, this, uh, this structure of a wine, mm -hmm. which is, uh, and, and the identity of the region, okay. which is very interesting. Yes, äh, also der, ähm, wenn man ein Blend macht und äh, auch hier in dem Vieux Carignan ist es, ähm, der äh, äh, Carignan ist das Rückgrat eines Blends, wenn man, äh, weil die traditionellen Mischungen, hatte, hatte ich ja gerade schon erklärt, ist Grenache, Syrah und äh, Carignan und ähm, das, äh, der Carignan gibt immer den, 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 das Rückgrat des Weines und bevor irgendwie ein anderer die Fruchtigkeit macht und der andere hier noch was macht, ähm, der Carignan ist das Rückgrat und deswegen ist dieser Wein auch so schön, ja so straight und aber auch lang und voll so Very nice Perfect Well done so far. Another question from the chat is, is it The uh, design of the um, etiquettes, uh, do you... The uh, labels. The labels. Um, uh, you do the design by your own or you have an artist for that? Oh. We, have, uh, we have artists for that. Yeah, because um, um, they were asking for the label with the, you know, with the different yes. things on it. We have a couple of... Uh, we have a couple. We are working with them, you know, the... Uh, to, to, to work on the on the communication of uh, of the of the company and um, yes it's um, well, it's an identity that we have built uh, years after years and uh, and uh, and the people recognize us uh, through this uh, through this design of uh, labels the idea at the beginning was the um, uh, I don't know how you say that. It's uh, draw when you draw on woods or on the on the stones, mm -hmm. and after you put some anchor and you you press mm -hmm. and you obtain like this uh, a draw. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a, it's called in French gravure. I don't know mm -hmm. how you say that in, in English. Uh, gravure, uh, gray. Uh, I don't know the English word, but um, in Dutch it's is gravure. Gravure, mm -hmm. voilà. It's that. So we wanted to, to make the, the, the parallel between uh, uh, gravure, the work in gravure and in the wine, mm -hmm. in fact. As Because gravure, it's, uh, uh, you, you have to be an artist mm -hmm. and uh, after, you need to have a, a technical knowledge yes. in order in order to obtain something which is artistic. Yeah. Uh, then have I noch, uh, I ha uh, then I translated it wrong. It's, it's Tiefdruck. Um, also es ist eine bestimmte Drucktechnik, für die man technisches Wissen und Know-how haben muss, uh, uh, um es anzuwenden. Uh, und ich habe in meinem Studium selber Tiefdruck gemacht und es ist ein sehr aufwendiges Verfahren, wo du zum Teil halt mit kleinsten Werkzeugen reinritzt und halt natürlich auch alles spiegelverkehrt reinritzt, um es dann später quasi mit Farbe auszudrücken, abzuwischen und dann zu drucken in einer großen Presse. Um, das habe ich halt selber schon angewendet, um, als ich mal Kunst studiert habe. <lacht> Und äh, es ist ein sehr aufwendiges Verfahren, aber es, es soll halt auch so ein bisschen zeigen, wie viel Arbeit und Wissen in dem Wein steckt. Um, so I just explained that I, um, in my uh, studies, I did uh, the kind of uh, uh, printing that uh, you ah. have used for your labels myself. And it's a lot of work, I can tell you. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a lot of work, but at the end... Um It has a success. 
it's <laughs> a artistic uh, it's uh, an artistic draw and uh, you have to be an artistic uh, an artist and at the same time you need to have the knowledge how to do yes. it so yeah very technical uh, aspect to control yes. and uh, this is the experience and uh, mm-hmm. so and it's similar in the in the wine yes. it's uh, also, really similar in the wine yeah. Du musst einerseits ein Künstler sein und andererseits dein Handwerk können. Und das ist halt das Gleiche wie im Wein. Yes, and so it's why we have decided to 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 put this uh, type of uh, goes in on the on our labels. Mm-hmm. And I think it's all uh, all things that have to do with tradi- traditional winemaking, if I remember right. So you have uh, les terroirs, this range. Yes. It's uh, only uh, tools of uh, of the vineyard. Mm-hmm. It's the tool of the vineyard. This range, uh, les crus. It's uh, all the gastronomic. Uh, yes, so no. it's glasses, uh, knife, uh, forks, uh, ah. different things uh, um, uh, that you uh, meet inside of the the the, the, mm-hmm. the gastronomic universe. Yeah. And um, after we have uh, a top range, which is called, uh, with the gray label, which is called Les Cuvées Rares. Mm-hmm. So Les Cuvées Rares, it's a selection of only uh, one parcel uh, in the languedoc Cossillon, mm-hmm. selected for the quality of these grapes. And uh, we start project of uh, five or six barrels of that. Mm-hmm. And after two years, we bottle it. So it's... Uh, very limited uh, quantities of yeah. uh, 3,000 bottles, something like this. Mm-hmm. And this uh, gray label, uh, this uh, cuvée rare, it's, uh, it's a jewelry uh, um, draws of uh, different uh, jewels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I cl- explain. The, es gibt drei uh, um, Reihen. Das eine ist die, die ihr jetzt gerade seht, mit dem hellen Label. Das, äh, ähm, das sind die Terroirs. Da gibt es sechs. Ähm, da, da drüber ist das, was wir gleich probieren, den Terrasses du Lasac. Das sind Sachen, die mit der Gastron- also mit dem Essen und Trinken zu tun haben. Ähm, das ist das braune Label. Da ist jetzt zum Beispiel ähm, ein Kelch drauf. Ähm, aber es gibt halt auch noch die Gabel und das Messer. Und das, ähm, da haben wir drei von im Programm. Ich glaube, es gibt aber vier. Und dann äh, gibt es darüber das noch mit dem grauen Label. Das sind die äh, ähm, ganz besonderen. Ähm, davon haben wir auch welche da bei uns. Ich glaube, ähm, Les Selbs und Le Pic oder ähm, Also wir haben davon auch welche in der Reihe. Und da sind dann Juwelen drauf in verschiedener Art. Weil sie, um zu zeigen, dass das noch ein, Le- ein Level da drüber ist. Ah, wir kriegen gerade mal eine Flasche gezeigt. Genau. Das ist dann die Linie da drüber. Ähm, genau. Ist das... Le- Which one is that it? Is a, that is a cuvée rare. It's a magnum of Le Roc. Le Roc, and, ah. Uh, that is Le Roc, yes. yes. So it's a cuvée rare and, uh, and this is uh, the, 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 the top cuvée. Mm-hmm. I just explained the t- uh, different ranges, so... Also das sind die, dra- das, das sind die verschiedenen äh, ähm, Linien, die es gibt. Und wir haben auch auf der, aus der grauen Linie haben wir was da. Wenn ihr ein schönes Geschenk für Weihnachten braucht, müsst ihr da mal gucken. <lacht> so, ähm, so ähm, sind da Fragen noch zum äh, Vieux Carignon? Sonst würden wir äh, weitergehen Spontan. zum äh, Terrasses du Larzac. Terrasses du Larzac. The last, but not the least. <laughs> There's so much more to explore. <laughs> Ta-da! If I remember right, Terrasses du Lazac is like a, a plateau. Exactly, yes. It's a plateau uh, situated in the north of uh, Montpellier. So uh, when you are in Montpellier, which is uh, not very far from the from the coast, so we are situated now in the east of the Languedoc-Roussillon appellation. And uh, when you are in Montpellier, you take uh, the road uh, direction to the north and uh, you will... Uh, Uh, climb uh, 
uh, slowly uh, in the middle of different uh, terrace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, the, it's the appellation of uh, Terrace du Larzac. And uh, it's true, and uh, when you have finished to, to, to climb, you arrive on the big plateau, very flat. But uh, there in the Larzac, it's called the Larzac uh, plateau. You, you have no, 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 no vineyard there. Uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, uh, cows and shit. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just uh, for, the, for the animals. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no vineyard over there. But all the terraces which are climbing, In fact, they are facing to the Mediterranean Sea. And this is the junction between the, the, the Black Mountains and this Plateau du Larzac, mm -hmm. which is the beginning of the Massif Central. So wow. uh, after you, you have the big uh, mountain in the middle of France, which is called Massif Central, mm -hmm. uh, the Seven uh, in, the, in the east part, Uh, so uh, it's a beautiful place. Eh? It's uh, it's uh, it's very nice, and uh, the situation of the Terrace du Larzac uh, region appellation is um, is fantastic uh, in term of um, in term of uh, situation for for the vineyard because uh, it's uh, quite uh, cold during the the, the night. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, hot during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, um, It's, uh, it's not completely orientated uh, south, it's uh, more orientated east, mm -hmm. uh, usually. And, um, and you have uh, diversity in terms of soils as well. You have uh, uh, clay limestone, but you have as well uh, uh, what we call roof, uh, which is... Um, uh, it's, um, oh, that's interesting. It's a clay. It's clay with uh, with the iron inside, so it's very red uh, red soils. Mm -hmm. So you have different uh, situation inside of the same appellation, oh. and we are working with uh, uh, four different uh, um, uh, places mm -hmm. with uh, four different uh, partners, and uh, and to, to create this uh, to create this bottle. Okay, so um, the Terrasses du Lassac is a high plateau. Äh, äh, nördlich von äh, Montpellier. Ähm, da gehen, fängt das Zen, äh, Massiv Central an, ähm, was sich durch äh, quasi Frankreich ein bisschen durchzieht. Und ähm, es gibt eine besondere Situation, weil es besondere äh, ähm, Erden dort gibt oder besonderen Grund, äh, Terror da gibt. Einmal gibt es ähm, Lehm, äh, äh, Lehm Sand, nee, nicht Sandstein, äh, Lehm äh, mit äh, Kalkstein. Claystone. Äh, und, mhm. Aber andererseits gibt es auch äh, das Ganze noch mit Eisen drin, was das Ganze rot macht. Und dadurch ist es so eine besondere Mischung. Ähm, auf, klein, auf, klein, äh, auf kleinem Gebiet gibt es verschiedene äh, Untergründe. Und ähm, es ist halt während des Tages relativ warm und nachts relativ kalt. Und es ist keine komplette südliche Ausrichtung, sondern ein bisschen östlich. Und dadurch, ähm, ähm, durch diesen großen Temperaturunterschied zwischen Tag und Nacht, äh, gibt es halt dann auch besondere Weine. Exakt. <lacht> Prima. <lacht> So um, the, uh, the, the, the blend here, it's uh, 50% of Mourvedre and 25% of uh, Grenache and 25% of Syrah. So uh, it's one of um, our wines, uh, which is not with Carignan. It's quite unusual, <laughs> but uh, uh, this, uh, this wine is, uh, is, not, um, is not with Carignan. Mm -hmm. So a part of the a part of the of the vineyards are situated in the south of the appellation, uh, near uh, Anyane. You, you know um, the Mas de Masgasac, oh. all this uh, the domain, the Mas de Masgasac. No, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. No problem. Should we no should, problem. should we get the map uh, and put it a little bit uh, 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 closer? Uh, but I'm not sure if, I, if we find it there. Not really in the north of the in the south of the appellation. You have a village which is quite uh, 
right now, which is called Anyan. So we have a part of the of the vineyard mm -hmm. situated in this uh, in this part. Ah, okay. And after we climb uh, in the north, we go on the north of the appellation, and we do there the the the, the Syrah and uh, and the Grenache, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, situated more in the north. Uh, uh, Near, on the north of Lodev, and after completely at the end of the of the appellation, we have the the rest of the of the partners mm -hmm. and the and yard. So we produce something like uh, eight thousand to ten thousand bottles per year of this mm -hmm. wine. So which is uh, a, a small uh, a small quantity, but. Um, uh, It depends on the vintage, but uh, yes, mm -hmm. it's uh, more or less eight, uh, eight to ten thousand bottles. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you can produce good wines if you produce a lot of wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's difficult uh, to combine uh, the the both things. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so um, I translate that for a moment. <laughs> Um, I, I, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to translate French humor, you know. <laughs> so, um, das ist eine Mischung aus äh, um, 50% Mouvetre, 25% äh, Prozent Syrah und äh, 25% Prozent, äh, Grenache. Das ist einer der wenigen Weine ohne Carignan, also ohne Rückgrat. Ähm, aber äh, ähm, es ist halt ein sehr ähm, einer ein sehr guter Wein, der äh, ähm, ähm, mit äh, 8.000 bis 10.000 Flaschen in, äh, pro Jahr, also es schwankt immer ein bisschen, je nachdem, wie das Wetter so ist, ähm, ähm, einfach auch keine Riesenmenge ist. Ähm, weil äh, es gibt ja äh, nicht nur uns, die diesen Wein verkaufen, sondern auch noch viele andere Menschen auf der Welt. Ähm, und manchmal sind Sachen auch ausverkauft bei euch. So I was just explaining that uh, um, um, uh, we are not the only ones that are selling your wines and sometimes uh, um, uh, wines are sold out because you don't have like uh, so much of it. No, no, yes, it's true, yes. So, uh, for uh, well, this type of wines, they, they are produced in, uh, in, in small quantities, clearly, yeah, because uh, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of... Uh, Uh, yes, it's a lot of work in the vineyard. It's a lot of work uh, for the vinification. Mm -hmm. It's aged in oak barrel during uh, uh, 12 to 14 months uh, in, inside of the vineyard. So uh, because the aging uh, of the wines have to be done in the Terrasse du Larzac appellation if you, are, if you want to maintain the, the, the appellation on the ah, bottle. Okay. So it's a lot of... Uh, You have a lot of uh, yes uh, things to, to to follow in order to uh, and uh, yes it's a lot of work mm -hmm. really and because of the high attitude right it's quite high yes it's quite high but um, uh, any um, all our wines uh, in appellation all the work that we are doing inside of the wines. Uh, Uh, in the appellation, Terroir, uh, Languedoc, uh, uh, Cru, Cuverara, La Madone, uh, Le Panchal, Le Sentier, all these wines, they have, uh, they, they are, it's, it's coming from uh, parcel selection situated high in altitude. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, 200, 250, 300, 400 uh, for the Caramani, uh, 400 meters. So We want we want to, to, to select parcels situated high in altitudes for sure. Mm -hmm. um, ja, es gibt natürlich, äh, äh, es ist halt äh, tatsächlich ein, ein Merkmal von dem Weingut, dass sie sehr viele Sachen in, in etwas höherer Höhe haben, weil es einfach bessere Weine produziert und es einfach ein, ein Markenzeichen ist auch. Ähm, haben wir noch Fragen im Chat? No, spontan nicht. Okay, um, so there are no questions in the chat right now. But um, if we go to the tasting of it, uh, how many? Uh, how long is it in the oak? Twelve to fourteen months. Twelve to fourteen. Okay. It depends uh, on the vintage. Uh, 
Some some barrels it's twelve, some barrels it's eleven, some barrels it's thirteen. Mm. Uh, it depends. When it's when it's ready, it's it, it's ready. <laughs> Exactly. When it's ready and uh, when the blend is uh, is built, it's uh, it's uh, it's time to uh, to bottle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, because um, we should mention maybe uh, some of your wines that I don't have. Like for example, La Madonna is something very special that that you made. Uh, I think it was on the Pro Wine like two or three years ago that you first brought it out. Um, that's a very special wine. It's it's a, a little bit more pricier, but I think uh, I, I, I have at least to explain to my customers that things like that also exist on this wine winery, because it's important to know that there's like other things as well. So, explain, yeah, so explain. Uh, I, I try to explain, but you maybe have to to say some words about the Madonna as well. Um, um, zwei oder drei Jahre um, um, uh, uh, auf der Provine gab es einen neuen Wein von diesem Weingut, der heißt La Madonne. Das ist ein, ein ich glaube, es gibt nur 200, 2000 Flaschen oder sowas, also eine sehr kleine Menge. Um, und es ist ein ganz, ganz besonderer Wein mit Handlese und ganz besonderen Flaschen mit einem total wunderschönen Etikett. Um, um, und ähm, sowas gibt es natürlich auch. Wir, wir, wir haben uns jetzt äh, äh, in einer äh, Preislage äh, äh, von äh, 7, 8 Euro bis 15 Euro bewegt oder 14, 80. Ähm, und ähm, es gibt natürlich auch Sachen, die mehr kosten. Und dieser Madonne ist auf jeden Fall etwas ganz, ganz Besonderes. Den durfte ich probieren und der ist einfach fantastisch. Aber da bewegen wir uns natürlich in, einer, in ganz anderen Regionen. Ähm, aber äh, um, vielleicht, uh, um, uh, maybe you can explain what, what's the special thing about La Madonna. Because if people are getting interested on, and want to order it, then I can, pen, can put it on the next uh, palette that I order. <laughs> no, La, La Madonna, it's, um, it's a wine issue from the domain. So uh, we come back at the beginning of the... Of the Of the show, of the tasting, <laughs> of the tasting, uh, when I explain uh, the, the the domain and the situation of the domain, the domain uh, is situated. Yes, is is the last, is the is the the most continental domain of the appellation of Corbière, so it's just uh, at the limit of the appellation of Corbière. Mm -hmm. It's completely the opposite side of uh, of uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. So it means that we are situated in the in the coldest part of the of the Corbière Appellation. So we are at um, uh, something like uh, 300 meters, mm -hmm. and um, and the style of this Corbière is uh, completely unusual uh, because of uh, its uh, situation and uh, because of the quantity that we produce. So uh, we have uh, created a cellar, especially for, for, for this, uh, this cuvee. Uh, so it's a very small, uh, very small cellar with uh, just 100 hectoliters, uh, with the top quality of uh, equipment. And, uh, and we produce something like uh, 3,000 to 3,000 to 3,500 mm -hmm. bottles uh, uh, per year, no more. And uh, it's a selection of our best um, uh, grapes of uh, Syrah and Grenache. Mm -hmm. So um, the 2016 uh, was the first uh, vintage, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so it's uh, it's quite young. And uh, when we have uh, started with this wine, we have uh, we didn't know uh, which position in the middle of the. Uh, top quality uh, wines in Languedoc uh, uh, should be for La Madone. So uh, we were wondering with uh, Laurent uh, what is the, the, the position of La Madone. So we have decided uh, in order to, to check that, to, to organize um, a, a big uh, blind tasting um, uh, in order to, to compare La Madone Uh, to the top cuvée in, in Languedoc-Roussillon ah. with uh, uh, the, 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 the cuvée uh, um, 
famous uh, uh, in the, in the region. So yeah, all, all the top were there. So Bizel was there. Uh, 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 Peiro Rose was there, uh, uh, Moncalmes was there, all, all the top QV was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have organized a blind tasting with uh, uh, good, um, uh, very uh, uh, international and famous uh, um, journalists. journalists and writers. Mm -hmm. uh, so Betanet de Sauve, uh, Decanter, uh, One Spectator, oh. uh, a lot of people were there. Mm -hmm. And we have um, we were we have finished second at the tasting oh. on 22 wines. Wow! So, so let me explain that. So. Um, also mit diesem Wein yeah. wussten Sie erst nicht genau. Also es ist erstmal eine, eine besondere äh, Appellation ähm, ganz im Norden, also das Kel die kälteste äh, Gegend. Also nicht nicht am Meer wie die anderen, sondern ganz so weit im Norden, dass es gerade noch in der Appellation ist. Ähm, und äh, es werden nur 3.000 bis 3.500 Flaschen produziert pro Jahr, was auch eine kleine Menge ist. Ähm, und sie wussten nicht genau, wo sie damit stehen im Vergleich mit den anderen berühmten Cuvées und, und äh, Appellationen im Languedoc. Und dann haben sie ein Blind Tasting, also ein, eine Blindverkostung äh, organisiert ähm, mit die, die zehn Topweine des Languedoc und ihrer war da drunter ähm, und mit ganz bekannten äh, Journalisten und ähm, ähm, haben das dann äh, haben da dann den zweiten Platz belegt, um einfach zu sehen, wo sie stehen mit ihrem in ihrem Wein. Ähm, äh, and I forgot to mention the grapes. It was Grenache and it was Syrah. Syrah. Also es ist halb Syrah und halb Grenache. Ähm, ähm, und das hat natürlich das Ganze sehr schön bestätigt, wenn sie in, einem Blind, äh, in einer Blindverkostung äh, den zweiten Platz machen. Das ist natürlich eine sehr schöne, schö schöne Bestätigung für, für die Arbeit, die in, diese, in so einem QV steckt. Um, I was uh, explaining that it, uh, of course, uh, uh, like a big uh, a win if you, your work gets like found out to be second place in such a range, you know. Uh, it was like a big gift for you. <laughs> yes, for sure it was not expected by us and we were uh, uh, surprised by this result. Uh, but um, uh, it's always interesting to, to compare uh, the wines uh, in the blind tasting. Blind tasting mm. is always a, a very, um, uh, very clear and very... Um, the people, mm -hmm. they... Well, they taste the wine, uh, they have the same time, uh, the condition of the tasting is uh, similar for all the wines. Yes. So, uh, well, obviously it was a tasting done one day uh, at a special date and uh, maybe it was done the day after we, 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 we were not uh, at the second position. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, the... the The proof is uh, is that uh, on 22 uh, top wines, we we can say that we are finishing the top 10, or uh, we are in the we have a good position and uh, and uh, and the wine is uh, is can be considered as a, as a, as the yes one of the the best in the Languedoc yes now. which is great <laughs> which is great yes. So great, you know, uh, um, after all these years of doing things, uh, to see that your work leads to something like that is just wonderful. So it's very great. Thank you. Thank it's, a nice, it's a nice award, yeah. yes, clearly. It's a nice award. Ich it's habe, also, oh, sorry. Ich habe aus dem Chat noch eine Bitte, die Rebsorte äh, Morvedre noch etwas äh, zu beschreiben oder darüber was zu sagen. Um, in the chat, there was a question uh, uh, about the Movedre, uh, to, to explain the Movedre more, because it's just mentioned, uh, mentioned very, very briefly. So if you can say a few words about the, the, the grape. Movedre is a, is a typical uh, grape varietal from the south of France. You find it, uh, obviously, in Dandol, in Provence. Uh, and that as well in uh, in south of France uh, in uh, in Languedoc Roussillon, and uh, we usually said that uh, Mourvèdre is uh, 
is uh, is giving the best of uh, the best grapes when he has the head in the sun and the uh, and the feet in the in the water. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, that's, uh, let me explain that because uh, it's <laughs> it's It's kind of funny. Um, so, uh, Movebre ist eine besondere Rebe, uh, wo, wo gesagt wird, dass uh, uh, sie besonders gut ist, wenn sie die Füße im Wasser hat und den Kopf in der Sonne. <lacht> Was ich uh, eine sehr schöne Erklärung finde. Uh, it's a nice explanation. But it's true. It's, uh, it's true that the, 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 the Movebre like this type of condition. So it likes humidity uh, in the soil and uh, likes to, to, to have a, a lot of sun. I would say that by experience that the Mourvedre likes the wind as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have, uh, have Mourvedre in a place where there is no wind, uh, it's a delicate uh, grape varietal and you, have, you are going to, to, to meet a lot of problem of disease and, uh, and the quality of the grapes are not going to be, uh, to be at the top. So you need... Uh, You need obviously, yes, the head um, in the sun, the feet in the water, but as well a lot of wind in order to, to obtain. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so like, if you have this position, you can plant some more better, yes, no problem. <laughs> Interesting. Another question? Kind of, no other, no, no other question. So, so we're quite at the end. So, should we put? Um, we have some pictures of the our trips there. Maybe we can uh, um, say some words to the to about the pictures because that was like uh, does, that's Laurent. So we. This is not. This is Laurent. This is Laurent, my partner. So um, he's not living at the same place than me. We are working together, but we are not living together. <laughs> So Laurent is, uh, is living near Béziers, in a little village which is called Puisserier. So uh, he's, um, he's an analog. It's, uh, it's, uh, this is uh, his work. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, he has a diploma of uh, analog and uh, he has worked as a flying winemaker during many, many years all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he joined me... Uh, now um, 15, uh, more than 15 years ago, and uh, we work together, and it's a fantastic partner. So, next. Yes, this bit? Okay. Ah. So this is some, ah, no. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it was moving forward. Uh, uh, so we have some grapes, and that was when we did some tasting at your place, <laughs> like directly from the uh, barrel or from the, from the, uh, inside the vineyard, where he was explaining something. So he tried to explain. So you know, and you know that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Laurent tried to explain, and we are laughing with Rolf. Yes, so um, he said he was saying he was watching today. So I hope he he uh, recognizes himself. Yeah, he is because he is writing to me. <laughs> so that's good. That is, uh, that is the vineyard that we have in the plateau de Caselle. So uh, it's uh, it's a part of uh, our Minervois. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we do um, we do uh, with this wine, uh, um, and it's the, the Carignan is not very far from this uh, vineyard, uh -huh. so it's it's a fantastic place. Uh, so you have uh, white stones there, and uh, that is a Grenache that you see. Yeah, I remember we had a great tasting there, and and that was it's me and my colleague back then with short hair. <laughs> So, uh, and we were tasting some grapes, of course. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and we were tasting some grapes as well. <laughs> so that was when we were visiting. Uh, uh, and I w looked it up. It was uh, back in uh, uh, 2014. Okay. It was a fantastic trip back then. I, I quite liked it and I learned a lot. Well, you are all always welcome. Thank you very much. I, I hope to be back there at some point. And I remember the great food back there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so that's some. What about the cheese? Hmm? The cheese. The, it was the cheese. Eh? The cheese was just the best cheese box I ever <laughs> se- saw. <laughs> so. Thank okay. you very much. Susan. Yeah, thank you thank very you. much for your fantastic wines. And I hope to be back there at some point, whenever the the the, the borders open again for traveling. <laughs> so, and I hope the domain, how, the domain, uh, the domain uh, is organized to to welcome people. Uh, we have four guest house, so we can uh, we can uh, welcome um, yes, uh, family, friends. families, and friends. Uh, so uh, uh, it. Now that the COVID is finished, you can this dark uh, dark period uh, is uh, is uh, is finished. You are you are more than welcome to come and see the the sun and the, and the light in the in south of France. Thank you very much for your time and for your great wines. I hope to be back there at some point, and maybe I bring some friends with me. <laughs> Thank you very much, and. Bon santé. Cheers. 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 Cheers.